Hello fellow YouTubers, and welcome to this very special video. Hopefully this will go over as well as I hoped it would. I'm going to count down my top 10 video games of all time. Just a quick round roll, I won't be repeating series over and over. So for instance, there will not be 10 Final Fantasy games, or even 2. This way the list shows more diversity. Anyway, let's jump right into this exciting video. Number 10 on my list is The Sims 2 for PS2. The footage comes from a YouTuber, Whitey28. Feel free to check out their channel. She's pretty awesome, but anyway, her channel and Twitter will be in the description if you want to go. Back about 8 years ago, this game ruled my life in a very unhealthy way. We'd moved into a new neighborhood, and I had this game on the PS2, and I invited my new friend Kyle to play. We played two player in a house, and it was just an insanely great time as we learned little things to save time, like, for example, the espresso machine and group hot tubs, the game became a lot more fun. Then we modified our house to make it cooler, adding in things like automatic opening doors and lots of other cool stuff. But in terms of sheer fun value, that time has to be ranked top three for any game in my entire life. Now, if it's top three, you're thinking, why is it number 10 on my list? Well, that's because once we made a new file, the fun was pretty much gone, and that fun has been gone pretty much since. Never has a Sims game been as fun as it was then. It's a shame, because if it was, this would be so much higher on my list, but number 10 isn't a bad thing at all when talking 10 all time. Number 9 shows my allegiance to sports games. Smackdown vs. Raw 2008. The footage is from Where 1974, or maybe it's Weir 1974. Either way, link will be in the description. It was insanely tough deciding which wrestling game to include. 2007 had a better GM mode, and 2006 had better music, and it was just a tough call all around because of that. I decided to go with 2008 because it featured ECW. You could light tables on fire and use barbed wire covered baseball bats and all sorts of crazy ECW crap. I believe it was the first wrestling game to include CM Punk as well, so... The game was just really good, and in terms of being able to go back and play it, it holds up really well. Even though a bunch of the wrestlers are gone now, most sports games, for that reason, have a very limited window of backwards playability. But this game makes it work. Plus, it was one of the last times I think wrestling was really good. Feel free to disagree, but that's how I feel, at least so. Plus, it was the last game to include GM mode, if memory recalls. 2009 might have, but it was one of the last. And that's one of my favorite game modes on any game of all time. You got to choose the matches and feuds and compete with friends to see who could basically run the best WWE show. Brilliant idea, and it gives the game that extra push to beat out number 10. Number 8 is a game near and dear to my heart, Harvest Moon 64. The footage is from Blue and Tarot Bang's playthrough, where they are going for a perfect game. Again, description. It's the only Harvest Moon game I've ever enjoyed, and it just seemed so perfect to me. You start off with a farm, and a bit of instruction from the mayor, and then you're pretty much on your own. I think that is really what made the game so good. You could work on your farm, or save up money to buy livestock, you might be trying to take a bride, or you might be doing all of them simultaneously, like the footage is showing. The hands-off approach really helped this game out. Some days there was a town event, but most of the time you just kind of ran around doing whatever it was you wanted to do. I remember when I was in, I want to say second grade. I was doing a report on this game because of how much I enjoyed it. I got my sister into the game, and even now I own my copy of it, and I have a ROM of it on my tablet, just for if I want to play it when I'm on the go. If I sat down and played, I could play this game for hours on end without getting bored. And for me, that is really odd because my attention span has dropped drastically since back then, so. Plus, the music was pretty awesome. If you've never played this gem and you enjoy sandbox farming games, I would suggest playing it. Of course, if you enjoy sandbox farming games, you've probably already played it. Speaking of sandbox games, Animal Crossing is next on my list. This gameplay is from Shadowhawk14, the original Animal Crossing. Really, this was a toss-up between the one on the GameCube and the DS. The DS version had the ever-exclusive photos of townsfolk, which was always a joy to get. I think I only ever got two. But on the GameCube version, you had classic Nintendo games in it, which is why it had to win. This game introduced me to Balloon Pop, Excite Bike, and Clue Clue Land. If you've never played Animal Crossing, basically you're, in, you're a human in a town full of animals, and you're basically trying to pay off your house. When you do, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, as does your bill. 
you find furniture and basically learn to fish and shake trees. That or cheat. It's like a watered-down Sims game. Not saying that as a bad thing, it's just more kids-friendly. Again, I made my sister play, and we've been playing now. We have the version on the Wii, so it's truly a legendary game. Dare I say, the franchise was perfect back then, and it just really couldn't keep up the steam, in my opinion. But regardless, the first game will always hold a special place for me, that place being number 7 on my favorite game list. The most recent game to crack my top 10 is Minecraft at number 6. I just keep rolling on the sandbox pattern, but I enjoy them, so... Minecraft proved something that I'd been saying for a while, and I still say, who cares about graphics? I know some people do, and if you do, that's, that's cool. Enjoy your game for what you want to enjoy it for. But for me, it's more about experience. The first time you blindly play Minecraft, that is an experience. I made a house out in the desert, and it was, it was basically a small crappy shack. I was scared of monsters, so I dug down to find redstone. And you're probably thinking, redstone? Don't you mean coal? Well, I would binged how to make torches, but the first thing that popped up was redstone torches. So I ended up getting lost and couldn't find my way home. I'm sure my house sucked, but it was just such an amazing time. Basically, this game took over my life. I got a laptop, which I still have, so I could play over at my friend Jeff's house. I spent so much time playing it, I didn't even look for a job for three months. And honestly, it was the last time I truly felt like a gamer. That overwhelming sensation to play a game that you just cannot ignore. You can play it for hours upon hours, and Minecraft was the last game to do that to me. And that was back in 2012, so it's, it's been a while. Also, the footage on the screen is mine, but Snailfix puts up a lot of Minecraft videos, so if you enjoy Minecraft videos, check them out. It's time to jump into the top five, and I think it gets pretty obvious down here. I mean, if you were making guesses as a longtime subscriber, you'd probably get at least three of them. So, number five is not one of those games. The footage will be from Vertical Sandwich, so check him out. But the game itself is Final Fantasy... 10. Before everyone jumps in the comments section saying 7 is the best game of all time, or 8 is the best, or any of the other, like, 100 games in the franchise, hear me out. Final Fantasy X was the first time it felt like a great game to me. I never really enjoyed 7. I don't know why, but it, it just never clicked for me. 8 was so confusing, and after disc 1, it seems like the people programming were like, forget plot, we should make it crazy stupid for the fun of it. 9 is just too difficult, and again, the story doesn't really appeal to me. 10, on the other hand, had everything. Great characters, who you really feel connected to. A great plot, which makes sense once you learn it. A scaled difficulty that wasn't too much, wasn't too little. Cool aeons, a great side game, an immersive world, lots of really cool bosses. Don't take its inclusion as a knock on any other Final Fantasy game. Because most of the Final Fantasy games I've played, I've enjoyed. But 10 is the best, in my opinion. Anyway, this game has been such a huge part of my life, I've played it over and over, probably at least 10 times by now. And I'm even playing it now, so... I'm on a quest to get the Platinum Trophy, and I will succeed. If you haven't finished the game, I won't spoil it, but it's just such a great game. Great characters, and everything just... everything mattered, really. So, it's a masterpiece in my eyes. Here's an obvious one. There was no question I was going to include a Pokemon game, and you can debate which one it was going to be... You can argue that it's going to be higher, but you'd be wrong. Pokemon is a great franchise, with just about every game being great. In terms of individual games, none deserve to be higher than number four, which is Pokemon Ruby or Sapphire. Really, they're basically the same game. This was the perfect Pokemon game in my eyes. So many awesome new Pokemon introduced. A lot of new features like abilities, natures, secret bases, contests, etc. You had two enemy teams, and while I think it would have been cool to double battle them, the game was still great. To put it this way, when I think Pokemon games, I think Generation 3. I mean, really, what is the flaw in Pokemon Ruby or Sapphire? I genuinely cannot think of a single flaw, that's how good the games were. Well, wait, there were too many water routes, but Repels fixed that up in pretty much no time flat, so... Not the best story, but the best game overall in the franchise, to me. It's time for the top three. This game is another shocker, I think. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Footage comes from Johnny Ray. For a while, this game was life for me, and for good reason. For starters, it has without a doubt the best soundtrack on any game ever. It's got a great story, bringing in the Rodney King riots as a major plot point, except they kind of rework it, but it's whatever. 
a lot of really great side quests like extra missions, collectibles, schools, territories to conquer, car collecting, and a slew of other things. And if that isn't enough to secure a game in this spot, you have the urban legends within the game. Myths including Bigfoot, UFOs, Leatherface, Suicidal Pedestrians, Nessie, and again, a crap ton of others. So in that regard, you have a huge YouTube community looking for myths. Then, cheat codes. It just seems like GTA is made for cheat codes. And this game had some of the best cheats ever. The jetpack, monster truck, three weapons, nitrous on all vehicles, flying cars, huge bunny hops, jumps, and there's just so many of them, like flying cars, and yeah, just a lot. This game is basically like four or five different games rolled into one, and that's why it deserves to be here. It sucked so much of my life away in one way or another, so... Plus, it's one of the reasons I'm a YouTuber now, so thanks San Andreas right now. Number two was a very tough decision. I debated San Andreas going here and Pokemon Sapphire, but the game that takes a spot definitely deserves it, and that game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I had to decide between Modern Warfare 2 or World at War, and it was a tough verdict, but I leaned towards the modern classic, while the story isn't really that special, because let's be serious, no Call of Duty is that great of a storyline, it's the multiplayer that really did it for me. Toss all the guns, all the perks, tons of attachments, bunch of maps, and a couple of friends together, and you have a world of entertainment. This game has taken away about 15 days of my life, just match time, add in lobby, waiting, story, story on veteran, and spec ops, and we're approaching about 25 days-ish. So I've spent about a month playing this game, and it's just so amazing. It sucks that now the game is so broken with all the cheaters, but what can you do? This is another game that helped pull me more into YouTube. Zergriz, X-Jaws, Excalazors, White Boy, Woody's Gamertag, Guns for Hire. I found all of them during this game's life cycle. Plus, Jeff found Chris Move, so a lot of YouTubers. And in seriousness, this game changed my life. So that's why it's number two. And number one is the game that cemented me as a gaming enthusiast. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Thank you, Capitalist, for the gameplay. When I made this list, I started here and worked around because this game is and always will be my favorite game. It has my favorite bosses in it, my favorite items, my favorite plot, but above all, it was the first game that really got me hooked. To make that even better, it stands the test of time better than any other game I've played. This game is a masterpiece, without a doubt. I would cut out some of the annoying talks if I made the game, but the first time you have the talks, they're pretty epic. Everything in this game is just amazing. I feel most people would agree with me on this one being up here, maybe not number one, but up here. Now, chance you don't agree, comment with your number one, or... Hell, your whole top 10. I've got nothing better to do than read your lists. Anyway, that's my list. Just drawing back through it in case you forgot. Number 10 was Sims 2 on the PS2. Number 9 was SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. Number 8 was Harvest Moon 64, while Animal Crossing GameCube was number 7, which was beaten by Minecraft. Number 5 was Final Fantasy X. Number 4 was Pokemon Ruby or Sapphire. Number 3 was Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, while the second best was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. The best game, in my opinion, is and always will be The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like, comment with your list, and subscribe because I said subscribe. I'm ready for 20 subs, so subscribe. And peace out, home skillets.